Hey everyone and welcome. All right. Welcome to SIS in layman's terms. Big thank you goes out to Josh Burke. He's a member of the Red Jumpsuit Apparatus who wrote that song that has uh, been my theme song for the uh, last couple of seasons. But I tell you what, it is a great day. It's a great day to be here uh, with you guys. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter stream than what I'm normally doing, uh, just because it is Independence Day holiday here in the United States. And I want to just uh, really touch on just a few things with the SIS program and where we're at, what we've got going on, and uh, really just open it up for you. If anybody has a question, has a co- something they want to ask about, hey, Dave, I wish the, I, I knew about how to do this or how to do that, there is a call, call-in call number. It's uh, area code 865-310-4880. That is my cell phone number, uh, company cell phone number. And that will connect us here. And by doing that, we're going to be able to run that through the board and bring you on into the call itself. And we'll do some live tech support. We'll do some stuff with that. Uh, Feel free to do that. We're going to be, like I said, running that here for a while. All right. So last week was was an interesting week just for the fact that we have had some big announcements. I uh, can't remember if we talked about this two weeks ago, but uh, in the time period since the last video, Worth has become a member of SICA. Now, SICA is an organization that is what, the best way I can describe it is that like the Dewey Decimal System for librarians, the SICA standard is what uh, the collision industry's software folks uh This is what we all uh, 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 abide by or try to become more standardized in our integrations with each other. So that is the SICA standards, and Worth has become a member of SICA. And what what does that mean? I I was like, okay, well, whoop-de-doo, you know, Worth is now a member of SICA. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that we're going to be able to start doing some standard integrations with some other data partners. Now, right now, we are only integrated with CCC, but that means that here in the near future, there's going to be a whole bunch of others that we're going to get the opportunity to integrate with. And by having SICA standards, this is going to cut out a whole bunch of extra work that we would have originally had to do to make ourselves uh, standardized in in that integration or that uh, relationship. So it's a good, good thing for everybody. And it's especially good for the end user who is going to get, uh, suppose uh, they're not supposedly. Uh, let's see what's the word I'm looking for. This is going to get their integration quicker to the software that they're actually using. Now, let's just talk a little bit about the SIS. And uh, like I said, if you want, the cell phone number is here, and I'm willing to do almost anything in the software to show you how this thing works answer your questions, bring this to you in real time. But I wanted to really talk, dive into a subject that is um, people assume that, that, that it's innate. This is what everybody is going for, but so many people don't do it. And that's profitability. Now, the whole point of this program has always been making it a basic cash register to get started. Now, once you're using the program, then the 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 program itself, the cash register part starts to fall away and all of its other features begin to come to the forefront. But in the beginning, most people want to use the program to make start making cash, start making money on the stuff that historically body shops give away. And this leads into a story that one time I was with a, a sales rep and we walked into the account and this is the prior web website days. And the customer looked at me and it says, all right, you've got exactly two minutes to make your pitch. If I'm not interested, you go away. And I said, that's fair. That's, that's more than fair. And so I set my bag down in the chair, pulled out the, the barcode scanner, set it on his desk. I said, sir, this is an easy way to create receipts for all the stuff historically body shops give away. It's all the nuts, the bolts, the clips, the chemicals, the pieces and parts historically body shops give away. 
he looked at me and was like, um, okay. I said, how much time do I have left? Because it's really what SIS is, and that's what SIS does. It is that easy interface to start getting paid for stuff that historically body shops give away. Now, to put this into context, why is it that Worth has such a hard time getting that concept across? While somebody like um, uh, say a paint vendor or a aftermarket sheet metal vendor, a name is uh, uh, skipping my brain right now, but uh, one of those customers have it easy. I mean, they don't need to have software that does this. You know, 3M is not coming out with the software that, I take that back, they do have a software, but is really 3M oriented. And, but it's mainly towards the stuff that 3M sells. But somebody like, um, let's say, uh, DuPont, DuPont Paint, do they have a system? Maybe, maybe not. But people are not really worried about it because those kind of products are already built within CCC, Mitchell, ADP, whatever estimating software they're using. So you think, well, why don't we do that? Well, clips are a little bit different from aftermarket sheet metal and paint because those kinds of items are standardized. You can have a, a fender that goes on a car, and it needs to be a particular kind of fender. It needs to look a certain way. It needs to have the bends and uh, curves in the right spots to be able to match the other side. So that being said, why is it worth, has, worth or the I should say the aftermarket clip vendors have such a hard time in getting this profitability idea out? Or how do we get ourselves more inclined with the Estimating side. Well, here's the deal. You have a car that is, let's say that your the bumper cover needs to come off. Uh, it has a small crack in it, or it, ne- it can be repaired. So use some uh, worth fix on the job, and you're able to create a uh, a repair on that bumper cover. And you need to put it back on. Well, if you have a let's say a five year old car just for argument's sake. You have a five-year-old car that's gone through five summers and five winters, and the holes that that plastic retainer go into are not the same size as what they were when it came out off the factory because that bumper cover is moved, and it's moving around, and it's it's basically wallowing its, itself out, and it's becoming a, a bigger hole. So the the OEM fastener or the aftermarket OEM fastener, aftermarket oh yeah, um, the aftermarket equivalent to that OEM fastener, probably a more accurate way of saying that, could fit, but it might be loose. So if that was the case, my technician who's putting the car back together now has a loose part. Now it's rattling. So now I have a car that's going to be Guaranteed to be coming back because the bumper cover is rattling. So to solve that, I use a bigger fastener. Or uh, a pop rivet. A pop rivet is uh, ground out with the drill bit. Now the hole that the pop rivet originally came in is bigger than the original. So I need to get a rivet that's just slightly bigger that fits in the hole that will allow that, that part to fasten correctly. The other realistic thing that happens is you're putting fasteners into places that no one will ever see. Uh, It's going to get covered up with a weld. It's going to get covered up with another part. It's going to be in a a place where you'd really have to go digging to figure out if if that particular part of the car was repaired. Sometimes you just don't have the fastener. You so you go in and you look for the most equivalent thing you can and put that into the car. Is it right or wrong? It's just that's the way collision shops repair these cars. So the OEM equivalent of just across the board, you just need to order OEM clips, is not always the most conducive thing to do. And this is where SIS really shines because now you've got a program that's allowing you to, whatever fastener you're pulling out of the box for that job, you have the ability to charge for it. 
and you're going to do it on the on the back end side or the the supplement side of it. And almost every car that goes through a goes through the collision repair process guarantees is going to have at least one supplement. And let me back up here a little bit. So those of you that are not in the collision industry, a supplement is something that, and I'm probably not using the correct terms here, so that's that's okay. But a colli- the car comes in, gets an estimate written, it gets agreed upon, now it's a contract. And so if I need to add something to that original contract, I need a supplement, or I need an addition to the original agreement. And that's where we come in. We add our clips and fasteners on the supplement phase. Now, even though you may have a process, a lean process, for example, and you're trying to get your supplements down to as few as possible, but you're still uh, in a point where you're trying to work the word I'm thinking of. You're trying to get your supplements down to a point where they're, just, they're as few as possible and the lowest dollar possible, but you're always going to have at least one supplement, and, but your goal is zero supplements. So if you're having one supplement and you've already got some other price changes on it, let's say that uh, the fender that you ordered was in CCC for 100 bucks, but uh, by the time everything came to it, it was 120 So you have a $20 price difference in there so you add that to the supplement uh you needed an extra hour to repaint something or you needed some other bit or piece or part or whatever that was missed on the original supplement now that goes on the uh, excuse me original piece or part that needed to be fixed on the original estimate now that goes on the sub worth is just another receipt in the pile in the former days of the old old style or the old school way of doing things, supplements were almost the standard or the crutch. I, I'm using the, these terms carefully here because it, it's I don't want to deride what body shops used to do, but this is what ha- happened: is that an estimator would write an estimate to the best of their ability, uh, but a lot of times it was just. Well, we're going to write 20 estimates in a day, and I'm not going to write really good ones because only about 10 of those are actually going to turn into jobs. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, on writing estimates that, they're, that are not jobs. I'll catch it in the supplement phase. That's really kind of going away, and especially with things like artificial intelligence, which has been kind of the buzzword here in the last uh, couple of weeks and been reading a lot of the trade magazines talking about artificial intelligence, which really is kind of interesting because now we have the ability to see the kind of repair or the kind of accident that happened and the kind of car, and we have 10 years' worth of data based upon that make and model, not necessarily that exact make year make and model, but we do have 10 years' worth of data estimates. Are, okay, well... In 94% of these kinds of repairs, these 10 parts broke every time. So I can start my estimate by utilizing the artificial intelligence says, oh, uh, here's a, um, a Chrysler 200 with rear end damage because uh, somebody um, rammed into them in the back uh, at a stoplight. Okay, well, we know based upon that kind of accident here are the most likely things that are broken in that repair or broken in that accident or in that damaged car. And it gives you a really awesome spot to start start from. It's like, okay, well, if these are the items that are most commonly broken, then that should make it pretty easy to start writing an estimate of how to repair it. But anyway, I... Uh, it's a lot of really cool stuff going on, and it's this is where SIS really is a strong uh, player in the field that we're able to start getting paid for stuff historically body shops give away. Now, one of the other really cool things that SIS does is that really kind of, I mean, go back to, I think I talked about this in the last video. I was talking about how that you can have different markups. And the markups in the, and this actually came up this last week. We were talking about different things like, well, I have a markup on my light bulbs. 
and I have a markup on my two-part chemicals, and I have a different markup on my clips and fasteners. And within those clips and fasteners, I want to have different markups for different price points. So if it's a if it's a penny to say twenty five cents, I want to have a five hundred percent markup. If it's twenty six cents to a dollar, I want to have a hundred percent markup. If it is a dollar one to say three dollars, I want a sixty percent markup. I mean, if you really wanted to kind of dive into that kind of matrixing, I guess is a good way of putting it. You can. This program is capable of doing that. And so I'm going to show the screen. There we go. So this is the screen. Gives us the ability to see what I'm doing here. And we're going to just play with the Advanced Markup Manager. Now, right now, we've kind of discovered that the... This is all under inventory management, and this is in parts. I, correction, advanced markup manager. And we're going to look for, I'm really going to dive in here. So this should only pull up like, well, there's 46 lines there. So if I have... Let's see if this works. Don't tell me I only have one faster. There we go. So I have these parts. These are all should be between here. Now, one of the things I'm noticing, and I noticed that this week, is, is that that SIS may not be pulling up the correct pricing. And this is uh, something we're going to work on and try to figure out why it does this. But let's, see, let's do this triple five zero seven. So the way that SIS works, The way SIS works is that the it may keep, it may show a price on it, but don't always trust that price because that price may be something that is being pulled from another spot. It may not be even where close. But the price on this is $1.35. Excuse me, 60 cents, 125% markup. We're selling it for $1.35. And the original screen that we were looking at said 85 cents. So what that tells me is that we've never used this part before. And that pricing may not be showing up correctly. And that's okay. Uh, this is going to be something that we're working on this week and uh, try to figure out why it's pulling up some rando price that uh, is not correct. But if I, you do have a question about something, you can always come into this screen. This is the actual price for this particular customer. Now, your price might be higher, might be lower, depending on what your uh, pricing structure is or if you're part of a co-op or some other thing like that. But for this customer in this part, it's a dollar thirty. excuse me, 60 cents. If I wanted to, I can actually put a price, a markup, my own custom markup in here. But let's say that I actually want You know, you do a lot of extra work when you uh, forget to turn the num lock on. So I have a cost of $0.60, cents and I want to build this particular fastener out. Let's say that Nissan actually sells this thing for $2.10. I want to be under OE price, but I want to make sure that I'm maximizing my income on this. So I have $1.85. It's going to automatically calculate my markup for me. 55507 is our, is our part number. If I wanted to, I can actually put a minimum quantity in here and a maximum quantity. Maximum really doesn't do anything. Pack size is 15. I never want to get below 30. 
triple five zero seven is our part number. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I can come up here and I'm going to go to, like I said, this is a live shop. My buddy's over at Joe Newbert Collision. So what I'm doing is I'm going to a really old RO and hopefully this car has already been delivered or, or totaled. One of the two. Triple five zero seven is our part number. Typed in my favorite part number and search. There's our part at a dollar eighty five. I'm changing that because if I do print this, it's going to send an email over to our, our over to Matt, and I don't necessarily want him to be notified about a job that's long gone. So there's eighteen dollars and fifty cents worth of fasteners on that. And we're going to print an extended invoice. Now, I can print this to CCC if I wanted, but the CCC, all it does is it gives us a little green box saying that it was accepted. There it is, $1.85. That's the basics of what SIS can do. Let's do something a little more advanced. Take a look at the extended invoice. Okay, now it's showing me I have six dollars in cost and I'm charging it out at eighteen dollars and fifty cents. That's a pretty good little uh, return on investment or just a couple of little pieces of plastic. And if you're going to expand this, let's say that we used a tube of seam sealer. Let's use a, a quarter can of a zinc rich weld through primer. Let's talk about uh, we used a couple of headlamp bulbs. All those things that historically body shops give away is now be able to charge for it. And if we're doing it and we're really min maxing what we can do with this program, then we're going to be able to start really maximizing the profitability on those parts that give you the uh, the most opportune times or opportune uh, ability to uh, to start making money with this program like for example this one here we and I I'm being arbitrary with it but let's say that you know Nissan is $2 per fastener we're still under OE cost and we're maximizing what we're making with this and we've got the receipts to back it up. So much like a convenience store. And I like using this analogy because it's very, hits very close to home is that if you go to a convenience store and you buy uh, a, a can of soda off of the, uh, off the, or out of the cooler or a 20 ounce bottle, which is more, more likely what you're going to be buying then you're going to spend two dollars, two fifty. I don't buy, I don't drink soda as much anymore, so I, I don't know. But if I go to my local grocery store, or even let's say that I go to like one of the big stores like Sam's Club or Costco or something, then I'm going to spend even less. I might even spend like, and I'm just using round numbers here. Let's say that I could spend a dollar at the grocery store, but I'm going to spend fifty cents at Costco for that same bottle of soda. But why am I willing to spend the $2 at Weigel's or the 7-Eleven or whatever your convenience store of choice is? Why are we doing it? It's convenience. I, I don't want a 12-pack. I don't want a 24-pack of sodas. I only want one, and I want it to be cold, and I want it to be ready to go as soon as I get back into my car and get back on the road. And so we're willing to pay for that convenience. This... These fasteners are a convenience for the insurance company. We're providing a service to them that reduces the amount of time that you're having, we're having to cover a car, a rental car, that is. 
And that's where these fasteners come in. It says that, okay, that, you know, we're putting the car back together and uh, that fastener, we, we thought we needed seven, but we actually needed 12. Well, if you call your dealer, you're going to be one waiting. Uh, sometimes they can get it turned around pretty quick. Sometimes it might be a day or two or might, it might be as much as a week, depending on what fastener it is and if they have it in stock or not. If you have it in stock in your shop and you're ready to go, you could probably save the day by having that fastener there and delivering that car same day. But to the insurance company, it needs to be a convenience item. And that's what we're talking about. Good deal. So, my friends, it has been a fantastic weekend here at uh, the Layman's Term Podcast headquarters in the in the uh, foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And I, you know, it's a personal thank you. I've been doing this with Worth for over twenty years. And this is an opportune time to say thank you to you guys. Thank you for allowing me to take a few minutes of your time and to really just kind of talk about what this program is and does. I want to say thank you because this company is just unlike anything else I've ever worked for in my life. And in fact, I, I've the closest thing I've ever worked at a job this long was when I was in high school and worked for a fast food place. And this is not even comparison. This Worth has given me the opportunity to grow. Worth has given me the opportunity to really shine in a way that I never dreamed possible. And this podcast is a lot of that. It's an opportune time to show what this program can do, give the program a face, give the program a voice. And this voice is for you. This voice is for you, the sales rep, the voice of the customer, the voice of what you want out of this program. Like I said earlier, now that we're a member of SICA, then we're going to be able to start really going after those integration partners. If you're interested in getting your software that you're using, let's just say for argument's sake, you're using um, ADP. And you talk to your ADP rep and say, look, I want the Worth program to integrate with ADP are you guys a member of Seca? If the answer is yes, great, let me know. Cell phone number is area code 865-310-4880. The toll-free tech line is 1-800-864-6561. And give either of those numbers a call. Get in touch with us. Uh, I am not a hard guy to get a hold of, and it is is something that it, you really want in your shop, in your integration setup, let me know. Because we will bend over backwards to get that integration started and get that integration going as quickly as we can. Now, these don't generally take, we can't do them overnight as much as we would like to. Sometimes these take a few weeks to several months. But the integration is important. Because the integration is going to give us the ability to communicate in a different sort of way. Uh, the days of throwing off some receipts out of the printer and shoving it into a PDF or into a folder or into an envelope or whatever, those days are going, going way of the dodo. Because this program is going to be the ability to integrate raw data directly into those kinds of programs. My friends, it has been a pleasure to work with you. It's been a pleasure to bring this kind of new technology to the forefront. We're excited where it's going. We're excited to see what we can do. And I hope to hear from you. I'm, we're going to be doing this again in two weeks. This is going to be an every other week podcast from four to five. Like I said, today's a little bit of a short stream because I've got some burgers that I'm going to be uh, throwing on the grill here just a little bit. And uh, we'll, uh, I know my family's not really excited about me. So what, what do you mean you're going to go do a podcast? Well, it's, it's Monday and it's the, it's the date, of, date of the podcast. So I'm going to go out here and, and go do it. But I do appreciate your time and do appreciate your input. I do appreciate you. I hope you have a great day and happy 4th of July, my friends. And we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>